this week's book gathering. I'm Dory, and with me today is my little high achiever, Danny, and my giggler. Yes. <laughs> You're going to hear her giggle. And then Sharon is also joining us. And, of course, we have our producers here, so I'm so excited to have you all with us. Today we're going over chapter number six, so I hope you've already read it and you're able to submit questions as we go along here. Now, if you're new and you're just joining us for the first time, you're welcome to go to medicalaestheticssuccess.com and get you a complimentary copy of my book so you can join along. And if you've missed the first few chapters, you can go to YouTube, the Inspiration Management YouTube channel, and there you're going to see all the episodes that we already did from chapter one until today. So I'm super excited to have you with us today. Today's chapter is very important because it's going to save you a lot of money and it's going to drive many people to your facilities. Super, super happy you're with us today. Now we are live on Instagram, so if you have questions as we're going along, feel free to go ahead and send them in. We're also live on Zoom and here in our studio in Daytona Beach, Florida. So today, it's all about economical marketing strategies. You know, one thing we sometimes discover as we're talking with new members and clients, one thing they all complain about is how much money they are spending on marketing. And when we dig a little bit deeper, we find out that they're not even tracking what they're going to get for that investment that they're making on a monthly basis. And it seems like they're not getting the results that they wish to get. So what I want to discuss with you today is the fact that marketing does not have to cost an arm and a leg. It can actually be super economical. And we even practice that here at Inspiration Management. So what I'm going to share with you are things that we also practice. As a matter of fact, it does not matter what kind of business you have, you can practice these strategies that we're going to discuss today. So I know we've had a lot of questions already come in. So we're going to go. Miss um, Danny over here is going to be fielding some of my questions and also Sharon is with us. So as we go through the information. Now, I also, uh, this morning, actually, as I was getting ready, I listened to the book because I like to refresh my memory. What the heck did I write in chapter six, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it's been a while since I've written it. So I was listening to the Audible book, which is great. In case some of you don't have the time to sit and read, you can always go to Audible and get the audio version of the book. So this morning, as I was getting ready, I listened to it, and I'm thinking to myself, boy, this is good stuff. It's actually my favorite chapter. <laughs> it's your favorite chapter? Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. It is because you can get great results without spending any money. That's my favorite part about it, is people just don't know. <laughs> Yes. So let's go ahead and dive in. I know we already have some questions in here, but first let's talk a little bit about capacity and uh, productive time versus non-productive time because that's really where marketing all starts. It really depends on how many rooms you have. We were just having this conversation actually with one of our High Achiever members to realize how many clients do we really need to walk in and how much each client needs to invest with you for you to reach your full capacity and reach the revenue goals that you're looking for. So it really all starts there. And the beginning of this chapter, uh, we gave a gift, which is the capacity calculator, to give you an idea of how much traffic you really need to come into your business. And I would love for you to do that based on the number of rooms that you have. Because a lot of people think capacity is you could have two people, but they're at full capacity. But then the rooms, they have four rooms and the rooms are sitting empty. So that's not, that's not <laughs> exactly. So what we want is we want not only team capacity, but we also want space 
capacity because the last thing you want is having empty rooms sitting there and you're paying all your operating expenses and not generating any revenue. So this initial exercise in chapter six is very important and something that you should definitely do before you dive into multiple economical marketing strategies. So go ahead and figure out what your team is doing and what your space is doing. Once you figure that out, then you should come up with a goal of how many clients need to walk in, and that's when you really should start diving into And those goals help what we hold need. your team accountable. Mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah. There you go, because I hold you accountable. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we all have goals we gotta reach. If yeah. not, that's where you find your areas of improvement. Uh. Have those conversations. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have some questions for us? Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, sorry. Some people That's okay. already sent them in. So. Yeah. Let's talk about self-marketing uh, first. That's the first one, and it's probably one of my favorite ones. And the strategy I shared with you in here is the business card strategy. That is like such a no-brainer of no-brainer. So, here I have a little example here for you. So... I've been teaching actually this strategy for a long time and you know the good ones are classics. So this is a classic strategy. It never goes out of style and it's something that you can do no matter what position you have within the medical spa or spa. And it's so simple yet it's so effective. So you know how people sometimes have their business card, all their information on the front and on the back, usually it's either empty or they have still your next appointment. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who uses a next appointment in writing anymore? Right, they just put it right on their phone calendar. It's like wasted space. So instead of having a blank space or your next appointment, what you should have on the back is, and it has to be this verbiage, by the way, don't change it, don't reinvent it because how I'm going to say it to you is how it should be. It should say a gift for you, nice and big. And then underneath it, it should say receive a either a $50 gift card or some kind of a gift card to be applied toward your first visit. This is very important language. Now notice, I didn't say 10% off. I didn't say 20% off. I said a gift card amount. Now, there is a reason for that. The reason is, if you give somebody 10% off of a filler that was $1,500, all of a sudden it's $150 discount. Where if you just give them a $50 gift card, that's a lot less and it sounds much nicer. So that's why you don't want to use percentages and you want to use a gift card amount. So now when you're out and about, we're going to talk about a little bit later, how you can actually use this card to self-generate clients. And that's what I love about this strategy. Again, it's a classic and you should do it. And talking about economical, what does it cost to print a business card? The same cost as it would a regular business card, but this time you're getting value for it. You know, you can give it out and get something in return. Get clients in yes. return. So for fifty dollars, you can have a thousand gift uh, business cards probably, and you can use them and be able to gain a lot of clients out of it. And we would put a and QR code pay. on that so we could track it as well. That's right. Put a QR code and it takes them right to a landing page if you want, where they can opt in. And now you have their electronic information and you can start marketing to them. Yeah. Woohoo! That's what we like. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Dory, I'm, I just wanted to share with all of you, you said something really keen there. And aloha everyone, I am dialing in from my home studio as well, joining you for the book gathering. But Dory, you mentioned this is a self-promotion strategy and I really want to hone in on that for the audience because you mentioned that everyone on the team should promote. How does self-promotion help the entire team and not just the business owner? It, it's 
very important because every single person on the team needs to be self-marketing. The more every person self-markets, the more successful everybody is. You can't just count on the owner to roll up the red carpet and think you can just show up to work and everything is coming to you. Success is a team effort. No one can really succeed on their own. Like, I need Danny, I need Sharon, I need David. It's a team and the rest of our team here. And if we don't all think about how we can add value to the business and how we can self-market and self-promote, then we're not doing ourselves any favor, our families, or the business owner. And each team member has a network of their own. So that just brings in more people to the business. Mm -hmm. So that's why every person is important. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. So, yeah. so that you've got to make a commitment, actually. I'm so glad you're with us today if you're live. You've got to make a commitment that you're always uh, promoting, always. So I have a little example, actually, about this. Um, not too long ago, you know, I do my morning Starbucks stop every morning, 8 o'clock or 7.30, depending on how early I want to get to work, <laughs> if I want to beat Danny to work. <laughs> Here, She's the first one there. See, she is a high achiever. So I was standing, uh, waiting for my order. Now I don't, I pre-order, but for some reason that day my phone order was not ready. So I'm standing there and there's a big line. So they were very busy. And I, I hear a couple of people having conversations. And one girl was asking another girl, well, what do you do? She's like, oh, I'm a hairstylist. And I, the girl said, oh, that's interesting. Where do you work? And she told her. And she says, oh, how is it going? And she's like, well, it's kind of slow right now. <laughs> I about just pulled my hair out. Doesn't I'm like, no, 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 no. You need my classic strategy. <laughs> it doesn't have to be slow. <laughs> it's not slow. You need to say it's unbelievable. So if it's unbelievably bad, it's unbelievable. If it's unbelievably great, it's unbelievable. So use the word, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's much better. But now picture this. Instead of her saying that, she should have said, oh, I work at XYZ Met Spa or Spa or Hair Salon or whatever, and I help people have good hair day every day. And I would love to help you too. As a matter of fact, I have a gift for you. And then you hand her the card with the gift side up, and you say, and I am great with that length hair. And I can truly come up with a great style that would fit your features and the shape of your face. People love how I help them with their hairstyles. So I would love to help you too. Mm -hmm. So give me a call. Come check us out. And... Take a look at our salon, and I would love to have you look absolutely beautiful and have a good hair day every day. I love this approach because it's not awkward. It's just seamless. It's genuine. Yeah. and You're giving them a gift. Yeah. You feel good about yourself yeah. when you get something like this. Instead of just handing someone a business card, you They're... turn your business card into a gift. Yeah. Now, you see how, how easy that was? This simple little strategy can help you generate so many clients on your own by self-promoting. You can do it. Okay. All right. Um, so that actually can lead to great because we had Joanne here. She asked, can you give an example of the three-foot rule? <laughs> oh, actually, that is perfect timing <laughs> because, and I love my, I'm, I'm very outgoing. And I'm dating a guy right now who's not so outgoing. And uh, he's, he's always admiring my ability to strike up conversations with anybody. So my three-foot rule is this. As long as you get within three feet of someone, if you make eye contact, whether you're at the grocery store, in church, I don't care where you are, at the bank, dry cleaners, you look at them in the eyes and you smile. What do they usually do? <laughs> smile back. They smile back. It's just like when you smile at a baby. You know, yeah. the baby usually smiles back at you. So you smile and you just say hi yeah. with your eyes smiling. And they want to talk to you because you look so friendly. Yeah. And if they do, great. If they don't, that's okay too. Yeah. But if you start that conversation and say, 
you know, isn't it a beautiful day? Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it is. It's so nice. And then you just start strike up a conversation. And you start talking. And what do people usually tell you? What do you do? Yeah. That, that's usually a conversation that people usually start. Well, what do you do? And you find out. And then the same thing again. That's when you just say, I, and you need to have that little mini commercial. So we talk about that in the book. You got to have a mini commercial for yourself and don't use the word, of, oh, I'm just an esthetician or I'm just an injector. You're not just You anything. are the expert. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Own it. <laughs> Own it. Own it is right. So you need to have that little mini commercial that says, you know, I've been helping people like you for the past 10 years. I help people look absolutely beautiful or look healthy or lose weight or whatever your position is. And I would love to help you too. I have a gift for you. And you give them the gift. And that's it. It's so simple. It's genuine. It's not awkward. It just feels good to mm -hmm. just talk. And you meet new people. And that's how you grow your network. Yeah. Well, I'll give you another example from a personal uh, level, personal side. So uh, I don't cook. <laughs> so I, I go after work every day and I don't eat all day and Sharon knows that because when she comes to visit she goes out with me to eat so <laughs> around 5 30 I'm like I'm ready to eat have been eating all day I lived on my cappuccino all day long that I reheat over and over the Dory diet <laughs> the Dory diet yes so I went to Stonewood the other night I just bought a new rental property and it's right next to the LPGA a country club where I bought this new rental and I sat at the bar that's usually what I like to sit I don't like to sit at a table by myself so I'm sitting at the bar there were two empty seats on my left and this gentleman was sitting there so he kept looking over I knew he wanted to like strike up a conversation with me so he finally looked at me at the same time I was looking at him and he said I'm probably the most harmless guy here. Can I get one seat over and talk with you? Because I'm kind of bored. <laughs> I love that. So, but look at what happened though. So I said, sure, you can move over one. So I kept one seat between us. <laughs> so we started talking. So he had a, a, a place in the same neighborhood where I just bought this house. And he was telling me, uh, asking me what I did, and I told him. And he says, you know what? My friend has the entire uh, northeast all the way down to the south. Uh, with He works with doctors, too, with stem cells. Oh, wow. He's like, you've got to meet him. So I made a business-to-business -business connection that's going to end up paying off huge for us because he, his friend, best friend, works with all these doctors all over the entire north and southeast of, <laughs> Florida, of the U.S. That's awesome. <laughs> and it was three feet apart. <laughs> right? And just being friendly. You never know what you're going to meet or who you're going to meet. You never know. You never know. So you should mm -hmm. always talk to everybody. That's all it took. One glance, a smile. And instead of me saying anything, of course, because I'm a woman sitting at the bar, he was the one that actually did it. Now, when we're talking about business, own it. It's own it. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah. That's so what I, I like to say. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable because talking to new people is uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to be. You can just own it and show them your expertise and gen be genuine about it. And then it's not awkward at all. And just smile. Yeah. And giggle. Yeah, it's easy that way. <laughs> it makes everybody laugh and lightens the room. It is. It's all good. Yeah. All right. So, so that was good. Yeah. So well, let's see. What else can we talk about here? So oh, let's talk about the spa dollars. Yes. That's the well, case. Dory. Yes. Before we go into the spa dollars, a lot in this chapter was also around self-promotion for team members using the company's social media channels. Yeah. And this I know is controversial. So mm -hmm. what are some tips that you have for both the team and the business owner on how to do it appropriately so it's on brand and it works? Yes, and that is such a major problem if it's not done properly, actually. And the problem that's really arising from team members doing their own social media without it being attached to the business 
is they're building their whole reputation, positioning, and expertise while they're working for someone else. And then all of a sudden, they decide one day they're going to go out on their own. And the entrepreneur who gave them that opportunity all of a sudden now is like left with nothing because they built the business working with them, and now they're gone. And sometimes they even open across the street <laughs> from where they worked or a mile down the street. And now this med spa owner is not too happy. So there are, and this has happened so many times, I can't even tell you how often that happens. So one thing we teach, which is very important, the first thing is you have to have a social media policy in your employee manual on how the team can use social media. The second policy you should have is that they're welcome to have a page on social media, but that page needs to be their name, but it's attached to the business. Uh, for example, we have a high achiever, uh, Lux MD. They have a medical esthetician. She was showing us her social media the other day, and it was Amanda at Lux MD or Amanda underscore Lux MD, and everything had like watermarks on it, and it was things that had the logo of the business on it, or anybody that comes to that page, they know that Amanda is attached to Lux MD. So those are the kind of things that are very important to have in place, and as long as the person knows all these guidelines when they first interview with them, and they sign off on that employee manual, now you're setting up the tone in a proper manner, and they know exactly what the guidelines are, and nobody's stepping on any toes. And you can use their posts on your business page, too. Mm -hmm. You want to cross-promote. If they are going to do it on their own, you want rights mm -hmm. to that material as well. And you should really approve it. Yeah, absolutely. Be before they even post it. If they're putting your another, name on it, you yes. want to make sure it's up to your standards. <laughs> exactly. So what I recommend is they can do, let's say, uh, several posts if they like for the week or the month. We like to work a month in advance, and then you can approve them, and that way they don't have to come and bother you every day of what we're posting. Yeah. So it makes life a lot easier. But you want to avoid that heartache yeah if there is a separation because they built their network on their own social page and mm -hmm. what they could just rebrand so you want to keep it strong and you want to keep it on your mm -hmm. page we have one member a high achiever member in particular uh, she had this injector and before she met us they, they had nothing oh. they, there were no guidelines no rules no policies no structure nothing and when we came on board and we started looking and at that time, that injector had just left them. And she was in a panic. She had all the pictures, everything, no agreements, nothing. Oh. So she had to go get an attorney, and it was costly because the work was not done properly to begin with. So avoid those costly mistakes. It's very important. Yeah. Um. Great question. Um, so we had Debbie, she asked, how often should estheticians post on social media? Yeah, not just esthetician. I would think like everybody, all your providers. Well, here's the thing. If they're sitting around and they're operating at, let's say, 50% capacity or they're only operating at 75% capacity, that means you have so many hours in the day you're sitting around doing nothing. So I don't like sitting around doing nothing. And it would be great if they could come up with ways. As a matter of fact, we're doing a, an event tomorrow, a complimentary webinar, about how to use content marketing to attract more people. And contact, content marketing could be videos, it could be blogs, it could be writing a newsletter, it could be writing an article. So if I'm a person that's a high achiever and wants to work and wants to create a name for myself and I want to succeed and reach my goals, then I'm going to sit down. I would post every day yeah. if I have the time. And if and the team has the time, then they should be doing it. <laughs> exactly. So they could go out in the lobby, grab a retail product, and talk about it for a minute and do a short. I mean, what does that take? And then post it. 
So those are the kind of things that we want to encourage the team to do. So if they can do it every day, do it every day. Why not? just looking um we said uh, candy said she said how do i incentivize the team to promote themselves oh that's a great question uh so we the way we teach this is through the volume per guest uh, compensation model the performance-based compensation model that we teach and those kind of incentives should be part of the key performance indicators so we call them kpis right and what you want to do is have uh, maybe self-generated number of people that you would like to have, a certain amount of referrals that you want to have, certain amount of reviews that you need to have. So you tie the bonus or the reward around the key performance indicators. And the more they reach those goals, the more you will ab you are able to pay them. And that should really all be calculated in advance. As a matter of fact, we were working with uh, Aspire today, another High Achiever member, and that's exactly what we did for the whole hour is we created a compensation model and KPIs for every single member on her team. And it was all about the number of reviews, number of referrals, number self-generated, number of people you enroll into the VIP membership program, all these things. So it works. So that's the way to do it. I would like to add to that that it encourages your team members to be more productive mm -hmm. too. So that's a bonus in incentivizing that. Um, For sure. Speaking about the copy system though, the memberships, if you don't have a membership program yet, I just re- uh, filmed it it's all renewed <laughs> revised and it's brand new and it is on Metspa Biz University now so those of you who are members with us you might want to go and re-watch it in case you don't have a membership program yet and if you're not a member you're part of our community you can go to inspirationmanagement.com go to the shop and you'll be able to get a new version of how to create a membership model that will generate six figures for you per month, per month. So go get it, it'll be a great uh, program for you. So I like to talk about the referral marketing in this um, chapter. Mm -hmm. So um, it, referrals are great. But I notice that people don't just, they just don't use it. Like they don't. They don't they, ask. Yeah, they're experts in their field. And this is why it's my favorite, actually, because they're experts, but they don't promote themselves at all. So how do you get people to increase their referrals? Yeah. I love referrals. Actually, we just did a Brewing Brilliance uh, module for all the members on Medspa Biz University on how to generate more referrals. You literally can double your business if each client only refers to one person. One. But the problem is when we first start working with people, we find out that no, but there's no systematic way or measurements yeah. of how many referrals do they need to generate or uh, how to do it. Yeah. How to do it. And, you know, once they learn, and we have a module on that exactly, how to ask for referrals. And if you train the team, you give them the script, you give them the approach on how to ask for referrals, then, and you hold them accountable for how many they need to achieve per month, then it becomes more of an awareness issue. Like, okay, I'm aware now, I have to get referrals. It's part of my key performance indicators. My bonus relies on not just self-generated, but also referrals. And you know what's amazing, though, is that when you start asking, because you are all great at what you do, and people love you. That's why they keep coming back to you. So all they have to do is ask. Yeah. <laughs> all they have to do is ask. So if you bring that awareness in the morning meeting, like the daily success planning meeting, and you look at who's coming in today, let's see, have we asked them for referrals? Have they referred anybody lately? And then you have either a campaign or you ask based on the script that we teach. 
It's a no-brainer. Yeah, it's a done deal. It's okay. a no-brainer, really. You're losing so much money by I, not asking. Yeah. That's why it's my favorite, because it's like, come on, you're wake the expert. Up. Yes, <laughs> yes, just wake up. Oh. You can do it. And you can use your gift cards and um, your business card and mm -hmm. your spot dollars as incentive for your um, guests to refer people to. You, you can say, here's the spot dollar and yeah. bring a friend. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And you don't even have to pay, actually. You know, that's the amazing part. Like, we have... So many people refer people to us. I have never paid for a referral, never. And because if people love you, trust you, they like what you do, they're happy to do it. You don't have to pay them. And that's why this is called economical marketing strategies because they don't cost you basically anything. All right. Right. Now, I, okay, so I got to ask. I know we provide a script and our members use that. But so that's a SOP. What if um their employees just aren't using the SOP. What if they're not reading the script? Well, again, you have to evaluate and measure and see why they're not doing it and teach them role play. And the more role playing you do, the better off they're going to be. Uh, there should be no reason for poor performance if you're on top of your game. Yeah, absolutely. Because if they are going to be poor performers and you tried and you've coached and you've train and you've done everything you can and they're still not doing it then that's when you need to refer them to the competition yes <laughs> <laughs> these people are doing it why, why can't you why yeah, they, you? They, they need to go away they need yeah. to go work for the for the competition yeah. seriously let them be bad over there <laughs> we don't want them to be bad with us no we don't <laughs> oh. so that's um thing that we should definitely focus on. Yeah. So what are some good expectations that you would hold a team member to? Well, there's really everything from the guest experience to their bedside manners to their clinical skills to their sales skills. So it, it's a performance measures. I mean, everything that we do is about performance. You know, how many clients are they going to see per day? What is the volume per guest for service? What is the volume per guest for retail? How many referrals do they need to get? Uh, how much, uh, how many reviews do they need to do? How many members they need to enroll? It's all about performance. It's all about adding value to the business. If you don't add value to the business, you're useless. You're, you're not contributing. And nobody's going to keep a person on the team that's not contributing. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. They can tell you, my whole team, I am just so much into bringing value. I have this conversation all the time, don't I? Yes, yes. <laughs> you should train this. And Dory, I think a good part of that too, and this is a great place to, to talk about it, is that we just spoke with our high achievers all week around recruiting, not just for a job, right, but for a career. And I'd love for you to share that philosophy because I think it ties in with performance-based expectations and KPIs. How should the business owners recruit and how should the team look at their positions? As a matter of fact, it was Dr. Walters that we were on the uh, Zoom meeting with a little earlier and she just hired a new guest relations team member. And she told us, I had had her change the way she phrased the ad because to me, an ad should be almost like a, an announcement for you, for them to come and join you for this great career. So we changed the verbiage. And her first statement to me this afternoon was, Dory, the, the candidate, the person that she hired, Mari, was so impressed with that first sentence that she said, uh, are you looking for, if you're looking for a job, don't apply. If you're looking for a career, this is the place for you. And she actually got that phrase and immediately called Dr. Walters for an interview. And that was the big differentiator for her calling her over going someplace else for an interview. So it is... <clears throat> so important. You want to attract those kind of people, then you don't have these problems. You want to attract the people that are looking for careers and not a job. Who wants to trade dollars for minutes? 
That is so empty and unfulfilling. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not me. I don't <laughs> trade dollars for minutes. No way. I, I trade value for minutes. What can I do? How can I serve? How can I benefit others? What impact do I make? And that's what I would want from the entire team here. And that's really our philosophy. And it should be everybody with us today, whether you are a provider, a team member, working at a guest relations, whether you are the owner, everybody. It's all about adding value. And if you don't add value, we're not going to reach our goals. Right, and it'll change the attitude of your whole team. And yeah. you don't want that because you don't want them to bring them down. It's just you're warming up a seat. And yeah. who wants to just warm up a seat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not warming it up over here. No way. <laughs> not on our team. We're here to work and do a good job. Well, we're here to produce yeah. results. Yeah, absolutely. That's really what we're here for, to add value in yeah. our clients' lives. Yeah. That's exactly what our purpose is. And it's our favorite thing to do around here. Yeah. Why would you want to do something you you just don't want, you know? Like, yeah. show up. If you're going to show up, show up. <laughs> Listen, if you wake up in the morning and you're thinking, oh, God, I have to go to work, quit. Yeah. Quit. Right. It's time to quit. Yeah, change your life. <laughs> <laughs> if you get up, like I got up at 3.30 this morning getting ready for the webinar for tomorrow. So, you know, my eyes opened up at 3.30 and I just got out of bed. There was no reason for me to sit there and toss and turn and toss and turn. And I just yeah. got up. I made my cappuccino and I was on my laptop at 3.30 in the morning. Awesome. That's the value I'm going to add tomorrow. Right. Right? To everybody that's going to join us tomorrow. I'm going to make a difference in your life tomorrow when I talk about content marketing. And that's really what life is all about, yeah. is making that positive impact. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all good. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this spa dollar before we... It's already... Whoosh, we're, we're moving fast <laughs> here. Okay. So uh, these spa dollars, again, this is another classic marketing strategy for cross-marketing. And that's another missed opportunity in most med spas and spas because nobody talks about what other people do. Right, and other people on their team. You can give, if you're doing a hydrofacial and someone wants Botox, you can recommend them to your teammate. So. Exactly. So this little tool will help them do just that. And all it is is just a cute little designed card. Uh, it could be a little hard stock. And again, in the daily uh, success planning meeting, you look at your appointments, you see who's coming in. And let's say I only come in and see Danny for just Botox. So in the daily success planning meeting, I'm going to look and say, you know what? Dory could really benefit from a Hydra facial, or she could really benefit from uh, this other program we have, whether it's um, sexual health, whatever, lasers, anything, IPLs, anything. So then you can take this little spa dollar, and at the end of the treatment, you can just say something like this. You can say, Danny, uh, I was looking in our system today in preparation for your arrival and I noticed that you have never had a hydra facial here. No, I haven't. <laughs> you always come here, you always get your Botox and your fillers and you've never had a hydra facial. Yeah. Well, I want to do something special for you. I want to give you this spa dollar. This is a $25 value that you can apply towards your first hydra facial with us. And I want you to meet Sharon. She's this amazing medical esthetician we have here. You're going to absolutely love her touch. And she's going to get your skin to just absolutely glow. I love that. So, so let's go get you reserved so you can experience that when you come next time. That would be awesome. Thank you. And then <laughs> reserve their time right there and then. Yeah. Get them on the schedule. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you don't reserve it, it, it's useless. That, the spa dollar is going in the trash. Yeah, They're gonna it's useless. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So you would take them, walk them out to the reception desk, and you reserve the treatment. Yeah. But did you hear, like, the excitement and the language again? Of Now, if I didn't have that memorized, I probably would have babbled. And you don't want to babble. No. Because they're not going to, they're going to tell you, I'll think about it if you babble. Yes. If you don't come with confidence, 
owning your ground. That's how you sell it. People are not, they're going to say, uh, yeah. maybe, you know, I'll think about it. You got to be confident in what you do and what your team does. And you have to be loosened. Like, like yeah. did you hear my voice? Yeah. It's so kind. Danny, I've noticed yeah. that you have never had a Hydra facial. Like, yeah. what's wrong with you, girlfriend? Exaggerate. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> They're crazy, like, you know? You know, it's nothing serious. It's fun. It's like yeah. talking to my girlfriend. Like, how can you not have had yeah. a hydrofacial? <laughs> like, what, what's, yeah. what's wrong with you? Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I would use that. But you know what? If you don't pay attention, again, if you're not a true professional that goes into the software system and realize who's coming in, and remembering what they've done with you and what they haven't done with you and what would be great for them. I mean, who would not benefit from a hydrofacial? Well, Andy or whatever kind of facial. It doesn't have to be a hydrofacial, by the way. Don't go to your owner now and say, I need a hydrofacial. That's not what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Any touch, it does yeah. not matter. And you can look at their recipe forms and their intake forms and see what they were looking for and see if you've accomplished that. That mm -hmm. leaves area of opportunity for you to touch. Exactly. So, yeah. There's all. There's also, ladies, the strategy that is in the book that Dory talks about when you hear the phrase, oh, I didn't know you had such and such treatment <laughs> yeah. or such and such service. And oftentimes the response that I've heard as I'm walking through different spas is, oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we have that. Right? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, we do. Very but that funny. is the key that someone is telling you they're curious. They wouldn't, we don't say things for no reason. And if a client is bringing up, oh, I didn't know you had hydrofacial. I didn't know you had fillers as well as Botox. That is the perfect opportunity for cross-marketing. Mm -hmm. And you need to then say, absolutely we do. And let me introduce you to Danny. She is mm -hmm. an expert at it. This is her passion. And she can really make you look unbelievable yeah let me walk you exactly and you know we had another call today with another uh, member and we were talking about productive time versus non-productive time with some of the one she had one medical esthetician that's like not busy at all and she's paying her like twenty dollars an hour plus you know all the employment tax and all this so this person is costly right now she's not bringing value to the business and when you have somebody sitting around doing nothing, it hurts the business. That's money going out that you're never going to recover. So, and everybody else is busy. Now, if you are a true professional, if you, so I asked Rosalie, I said, do you have an inexpensive peel? She said, she's like, yeah. I said, what's the product cost on it? She said, oh, $2. I said, okay, from now on. Every single, and she's a master injector. She's like great at what she does. I said, okay, from now on, every single person that comes to you for injectables, you need to say to them, what we did today was we addressed all your anti-aging solutions. And now we need to start working on the texture of your skin. So I'm going to do something special for you because you are a loyal client of mine. I want you to go and have a facial with Sharon. I'm going to give you a peel complimentary to the house. What did it cost you? Nothing. $2. $2. To, for your esthetician now to take this client and turn them into a repeat yeah. client. So instead of sitting there doing nothing for $20 an hour, get her busy. Let her do free facials until she builds her clientele. And that is just so smart. Yeah. So it, smart I mean, to heck. do. If that happened to me, I would come back for another one mm -hmm. over and over again. Yeah. Was... Or try the Morpheus or try the microneedling yeah. or try this or try that. And that's an opportunity. Right. Because if you're good and they like you again and they trust you, they're going to come back. So Absolutely. very important. So anyway, these are the things that our members benefit from when they work with us. Because Sharon and I and my entire team, we're just, we're like on it, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> and we hear from everybody else. So we, yeah. we know 
the good spectrum and the bad spectrum, and yeah. we can tell you. It's not rocket I'm, science, yeah. though. Like, we yeah. figured out the model. All they have to do is implement it. Right. That's really all you have to right. do. Like, if you just well, implement that, what's in this book. This <laughs> book right here, it's gold. It'll, this book alone will change your business, but we're here to yeah. support you <laughs> and help you go. Yeah. It is. Well, we, it, it, it's just a matter of choosing your path. The book is your roadmap, and if you want to do it by yourself, it has all of the strategies and tips that you will need to grow in your success. Now, what it doesn't have is Dory's years of experience, all of our advisors' years of experience, the team around marketing and web design and things like that, that will bridge time and stress for you, right? That's and that, Dory, is what we offer is that full service mm -hmm. business support that you need to go faster, mm -hmm. to increase the profits because you're not wasting your costs on the strategies that now you know with this book, now you know they work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, let's go into the shortcuts. Okay. Uh, things that you can do right now. I would start with um, go ahead and assess what you're doing about the three things we talked about, and that was referral marketing, self-marketing, and cross-marketing, those three things that don't cost you hardly anything except you paying attention and actually talking about them. That's it. So assess that, see what you need to improve, uh, take the scripts. If you're a member, you can take all the scripts, customize them a little bit, make them your own, and you're ready to go. If you're not a member, you might want to consider joining because you have access to everything that we talked about, literally written, audio, video, everything that you need. And then uh, create the marketing material. So this, you can call up a graphic designer or somebody, or we can Us, do, we do yeah, well, we can do stuff like that for you as well. So go ahead and set the goals for the team or your own personal goal if you're a provider. And then uh, determine those key performance indicators. Again, even if your manager doesn't tell you you need to do this and that, I would take it upon myself to set my own goals. And then start really looking into that daily success planning meeting and see who's really coming in every single day so you can help them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, of course, we have this other program that's ideal for team training. It's called Recipes for Success. We have over, um, I don't know, almost like 50 modules of one hour of teaching uh, of all business strategies for the team to learn. So you have no reason not to be super successful. You really don't. Because if you take just what we have and apply it, then you are at a multi-million dollar level facility. So those are the things that we had for you today. Now the next chapter is probably also your favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next chapter is continuing with economical marketing strategies. We're gonna talk about reviews and testimonials. And tomorrow I'm gonna talk about video testimonials in the content marketing class. So it's gonna be on YouTube, by the way, in case you're viewing this at a later time. The video I'm doing tomorrow, the show we're doing tomorrow is also going to be on YouTube. So you can, it's all about content marketing and doing it through via YouTube and videos. We it's, would love for you to join live though, because then you can get your questions answered right mm -hmm. there and then. Yeah. So that's going to be our next chapter, chapter seven. So like this, please leave us some comments. Uh, if you Review. got your book, please uh, give us reviews about the book and what you've maybe applied already and how it's working for you. We'd love to hear from you. If you need a marketing plan, we have one also in the shop. And the one last thing I want to tell you about is next month we're having the Millionaire Circle Seminar. And that's where we teach you how to attract the affluent consumers to your facilities. So you should definitely make plans to come. Uh, it's, I did a webinar about that. If you want to go and watch it, it's on YouTube now. We talked about uh, how to target, market, sell, and profit from affluent consumers. It's about an hour long, but it's filled with great strategies. So it's going to whet your appetite to what's to come 
during the two-day seminar. And it's right here in beautiful Daytona yes. Beach. It's going to be in a resort right on the beach, not in our studios. <laughs> But it's going to be right on the water, so you can get up in the morning, go have a great walk, uh, maybe work out, do yoga on the beach, and then come and join us. And then I'm taking everybody to uh, the Yacht Club for a nice cocktail party on uh, Thursday night. And then Friday, you spend the day with us, and then maybe continue your weekend here, and then go back home and start implementing. And I'd like to mention, we're also doing professional headshots the first day, so no. you definitely want to be there. That's right. So there you go. Yes. We can help you look yeah. very nice, look the part to attract the affluent Absolutely. people. So anything else you want to add, Sharon? Well, just to reiterate the dates, they are June 1st and 2nd, so just a little over a month, guys. And go ahead and check that out at inspirationmanagement.com, and you will see all of the information from the webinar to uh, register yourself. And there might be some bonus offers there to visit us. And as we said, there's some special things that will happen from headshots and possibly even studio tours of the beautiful location that you are seeing Danny and Dory from now. So we hope to see you there so that your marketing is locked in and your multi-millions are guaranteed. We'll look yeah. forward to seeing you. So excited. Yeah. You excited? Absolutely. It's going to be your her. first millionaire circle. Yeah. Our, yeah. our leap ahead was wonderful, so I can't wait to see what's to come. It's so what so did fun. you guys, didn't Danny do great? My young high achiever. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Go ahead and like, please, and comment, and leave us reviews. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless. And until next time, stay inspired. Bye now.